Well, haven't I given you enough ideas? I guess not. So here's part four of 10 low cost ideas for your A-liner or trailer. That's a squeaky stabilizer. Um, it's a little dry, it's a little rusty. And I gotta fix that. And it's also getting a little hard, it's getting a little hard to use as well. Now, some may think, well, just use something like oil. But the problem with oil, and it being the bottom of your, uh, your vehicle and you're on the highway, the oil is just going to uh, attract dust. And then you're just going to get a dusty, muddy mess. So it's not really going to help. What I'm going to try is an old machinist trick, which is uh, Johnson's Paste Wax. It's great for lathes and gears and stuff like that. But uh, I'm going to try putting it on the thread uh, of my stabilizer, and we'll see if that gets rid of the noise. Simply apply the wax on the threads with a good stiff brush. Much better. Smoother too. So have you ever brushed up against your A-liner trailer and found a hole in your best hoodie and then you're dumb enough to do it twice? The culprit is probably this evil latch. This part here has sharp points to it. And all you have to do is take five minutes on a grinder or with a file and smooth off those corners and you'll save your wardrobe. Another contentious issue I've had with the A-liner is the door and when it's folded down. This if you happen to let go, these hinges are not made to go flush with the side. And you can see there's stress on them right there. There's nothing holding them back and if you actually pushed on that, you'd probably pop the hinges out or you'd at least distort it. There is nothing holding this back and it just springs like that, which is not good. The bottom part of the door, it's the same issue. It's not meant to go flush with the side. You can see right here, it's putting stress on the hinge and there's nothing to prevent it from flopping around. So I've been looking for the last little while for a solution for both issues, both the door flopping around and the danger to the hinge when this comes down like that. I happened to find somebody with an A-liner that had a solution. So the solution is this. A T-style entry door catch. So the idea is to put the T part on the door, the upper part of the door, and put the catch on the side. So when that comes down, it goes right in the catch and holds it in place. My favorite tools on the road are my trusty portable electric drill and the rivet gun. No other tools are required for this one. Use it to stop the wind from blowing your door back and forth, or when folding down as a safety stop for lowering the side. Either way, it's less stress on your trailer. Another thing I'm trying is to uh, just make it a little bit warmer inside is I'm replacing the mats that I originally used. Um, I usually use these foam mats here that I got from a dollar store. But what I'm changing them to are kids interlocking play mats. These are another dollar store item. But the neat thing about these is they lock together which just happens to be the perfect width for an A-liner. So I can lock these all together all across the floor and they're not going to move around like the other ones did. I'm hoping because I can cover more area with them that uh, it'll be a little warmer and it insulates the, uh, the ground a little bit so my feet are warmer as well.
I think I've shown this in a few videos, but I've never really said what I do with it. It's a inflatable solar light called a Lucy, and you just blow it up. Like that. And you point the solar cell up to the sun and give it a few hours. And I just put a little clip on it and I'll show you what I do with it. So here's the light that comes with the A-liner. It's this side light. There's one on this side and there's one on the other side. They're 12 volts, but they're really not that good. They're not very bright and they're in an awkward position. Compare that to the LED solar light on low setting and on high setting. And if you compare it, it's actually a lot better color. And the nice thing is you can put it wherever you want. I can hang it off my paper towel holder here and use it as a reading light or take it and put it on the ceiling. Just balance it out. And there, I've got a light that fills the whole cabin. It's great. It's free light from the sun. You just recharge it every day and it'll last all night. It's really great. The door side cabinet on my A-liner has two drawers that lock with latches. Unfortunately, the latches don't work anymore as the plastic part is worn and the spring pops out. As mentioned several times, plastic is a terrible choice for mechanical parts. I need a durable solution. I picked up 2 inch cellar bolts and 5 16 inch diameter compression springs from a hardware store. To modify, I first needed to remove the lever. A whack with a mallet while in a vise did the trick. Using a cutting disc from a Dremel, I removed metal from the sides of the cellar bolt casing. I then filed the edges down to remove the rough spots. As for the spring, I cut it in half and twisted it in the opposite direction. That gave it a looser fit. Next I inserted the bolt inside the spring and put the lever back on. A little whack with a hammer secured it in place. I salvaged the original catch and added a spacer to align with the new bolt. I also filed an incline into the bolt end for easy locking. So here's the new bolt latches in action. It's now effective and no cheap plastic parts. Have you ever noticed how the once white caulking on your trailer turns black over time? Well, not a functional concern, it does tend to look grungy. Easy fix, lighter fluid. A little bit on a white rag and the grime comes right off. The other solvents you can use are camping fuel, WD-40 and even vegetable oil, but do not use acetone. From grime to shine. Well, I really like that clamp-on light I had above the door, but unfortunately I dropped it and broke it. So until I can get another one, I had to try something else. So I went to a dollar store and I picked up this motion-activated solar LED light. And I've got a command wire hook. So let's put them up and see how it works. The light does have a self-adhesive backing, but I'm not going to use it. I just am going to use the hole, which I had to make a little bit bigger. And uh, here's the little hook.
There we go. We got a nice sunny day. Let's see if it works. Wow, that really works. There's a little bit of a glow, but once motion activated, the light stays on for about five minutes. You can also manually switch it on and off to save more energy. In another video, I modified my kitchen cabinet by putting a smaller refrigerator in, which gave me room for a new drawer right here. So it's time I started on this side and do a few modifications as well. I also removed my water tank, which means the sink is completely useless. I just use it for my cutlery right now. And this always fills up with dirt and grime. So I think I'm going to ax the sink. So my plan with removing the sink is I'll have more counter space, but I'll also have a space underneath. So chances are that's going to be a drawer. And I just happen to have this wine box, which actually fits pretty close to what I want. So with that and a European uh, drawer slide, I think I can have another drawer here as well. The first thing to do is remove the stove. Four screws at the back and two on top is all it takes to remove the cover and the lid. Next is the gas line disconnect. Make sure you have shut the propane tank valve completely off before you disconnect this. A little plastic stopper on the gas line is removed to take the remaining stove assembly out. For the sink, unscrew the clips from below, then remove the drain hose. Also disconnect the inlet hoses and then remove the faucet screws. The countertop is held in place by brackets. I replace the originals with more sturdy ones. After removing the bracket screws, you can take the countertop off. I was surprised to find that the back support was flimsy and only stapled in place. I will swap this out with something more secure. Now I could have swapped out the countertop with a new one, but I'm cheap, so elected to reuse the old one and fill in the sink hole. A little piece for the faucet hole as well. I then use mending plates, screws and wood glue to secure the patch onto the countertop. A new 2 foot by 4 foot Formica sheet just fit with a little trimming. Be careful you don't over trim. I use contact cement to adhere the Formica over the old countertop. A small roller provides an even coat. After the contact cement was dry but still tacky, I laid some scrap sticks on the counter to prevent the Formica from sticking until I had it positioned right. Once I was okay with the alignment, I slowly removed the sticks one at a time. To flatten, I used a board, but a rolling pin would have been even better. I then cut out the stove hole with a sharp knife from underneath. Back at the cabinet, I drew a rectangle where the new drawer would be, then drilled pilot holes in each corner. An old saber saw was used to cut out the rectangle. Before the top goes back on, here's what I did to the cabinet. First, the hole for the drawer was cut, then the drawer rails were added, I then replaced the back support and added brackets to both sides and the middle. And here's what the finished cabinet looks like. Well, here's the new countertop, nice and shiny, no sink. And for the drawer, there's that wine box. I just 
chopped it down in a table saw so it was only about four inches high put an end on it and put the rails on it so in it goes I also put a little latch in the bottom it's a spring latch like I used in the other cabinet and it just goes up locks it in place This is one of my famous on the road repairs. My uh, bumper caps keep falling out. And uh, it's probably because when I'm, when I'm on rough roads, my two by four I use for putting up the roof, it sort of turns into a ramming rod and it forces itself out. And uh, it's happened several times. I know some people, uh, they put their, uh, their caps and they put screws on the end and just drill holes and hold them in place and I did that on the other end but on this end because I want easy access because I use it for storage um, what I'm doing is I've just got two machine screws I drilled a hole in each side and I've got some bailing wire so you can see it and I've made a little loop of bailing wire over that screw and what I hope will happen is I'm going to be able to put that on put the bailing wire across and then just loop it around and cut that off that way I can just unloop it and still get access to the inside of the bumper band-aid solution as long as it works it's all that matters Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found some of my ideas useful. But check back, I always have more. Thumbs up or appreciate it and please subscribe.